Welcome to this quick product and licensing comparison overview of Office 365 Project Online. As you probably have noticed, Microsoft has been releasing new services and apps across its Office 365 offering. Sway, Delve, and Power BI, and most recently Planner, give O365 users more productivity and collaboration options now more than ever. Here we'll focus on Project Online, essentially Project Server in the cloud. Office 365 Project Online, or MSPO, is Microsoft's entry into the hosted project server space. It makes distributing and sharing project, resource, and assignment information much easier. It opens up new opportunities outside the confines of a typical secured infrastructure. Project Professional, cloud-based versus on-premise, is the scheduling engine behind Project Server and MSPO. Only those PMs who will need all of the functionality of this powerful desktop application will need Project Professional. The difference between cloud-based versus on-premise is essentially how you pay for the app. The Project Standard version has all of the same features and functionality, but without the ability to connect to Project Online or Project Server. PWA is the front end of Project Server or MSPO. It's the home page of these two environments. Users are authenticated and granted specific role-based permissions when connecting to PWA. Project Online Essentials, formerly known as Project Lite, is reserved for team members. These are users who will submit task updates, respond to status reports, and access project site information will be running Project Online Essentials. Project Server is the on-premise PPM solution for Microsoft. It requires its own unique license and runs on the SharePoint Enterprise Edition. When provisioning Project Server, it creates its own unique database for project, resource, and site management. With regards to licensing, Project Server PWA CALs, or Client Access Licenses, similar to the Project Online Essentials as described earlier, is the end user or team member version of the PWA license. Each user who accesses PWA will need a PWA CAL. Incidentally, project managers using Project Professional will already have this license. Let's take a look at some of those options here. First, let's take a look at the different licensing options with MSPO. As you can see, I'm logged in to the Office 365 environment as an administrator, and I'm in the Purchase Services area under Billing, and I've scrolled down to the Project Online Essentials and Project Online area. As you can see, I have purchased both Project Online and Project Online Essentials, and you can see that I have one user purchased in each of these areas and you get an idea of what the monthly fees are for each of these uh, different license options. So the project online, the 45 user a month that you're seeing here is the, the server version of project online. And so I have a single license to Project Online, but I can provision multiple instances of PWA, which I'll illustrate here in a moment. I also have a single user license for Project Online Essentials. So this is the team member subscription that you would need for each of the users that are going to be connecting to Project Online. These are your team members, in other words. You can also see that there's a project online with project for Office 365. And so this is the cloud version of running Microsoft Project Professional. 
and so you would be paying this amount for each user that would be running Project Professional and connecting to Project Online. If you already have a license to Project Professional, then you would not need to have this as a license, which is what I have. Now let's take a look at once you have purchased this particular license where you will actually provision the instance of PWA. So the first thing I'll do, and you'll notice that I have a few different tabs open here, I'm going to go to the Admin Center, but I have the Admin Centers expanded with the SharePoint area selected, so you would go into SharePoint. So under the Admin Centers, you're not going to see anything specifically related to Project Online. Once I click on SharePoint, it's going to take me to the site collections area. So if I click on SharePoint here, it's going to open up a new tab. So this is your SharePoint Administrative Center. And within this area, you'll notice that I have site collections selected. Now within the site collections is my opportunity now to create my new project web app. And you even notice here that it's grayed out, but it says Project Web App, and that's because I don't have anything selected at this point. If I wanted to provision a new instance of PWA, then I can click on the New option, and I can create a private site collection with the Project Web App. Now, I wouldn't have this option if I, of course, did not have a subscription to Project Online. So at this point, I can create the Project Web App. And you'll notice that here in your status bar that it illustrates how many instances that you have available. And you'll notice the number here of PWA instances. So even with this single project online subscription, I can create multiple instances. And you can see a couple of those here. Once I have the PWA instance provisioned, it will look similar to this. So this is another tab that I have open for the provision PWA instance. And this is what is the, uh, this is essentially the home page to Project Online through PWA, through the Project Web App. Now shifting gears over to Project Server, I have yet another tab open, which is basically just the, the Microsoft site for Project Server. And from this page, you can see that they provide you with high-level descriptions of some of the functionality of Project Server. And as I scroll to the top in this upper area is the product and pricing. So I'll click on the products and pricing here so that we can look at what the differences are between the cloud-based and the on-premise versions. So I'll scroll down just a little bit. And under the cloud-based, you'll notice that you have your Project Online Professional and that monthly, monthly amount. And notice that's slightly different than what you were seeing on the site under my subscription model because it's based on whether or not you pay month to month or whether you pay annually. And it's the same thing for the online essentials. And then you can also see here as you scroll down the Project Online Premium and you can scroll down and see the different options that you have available to you here. Now when we click over to the on-premise solutions, you can see that really the difference here is between the Project Professional and Project Standard. Now, Project Professional, this is the same desktop application that you would find in the cloud-based, but as I was indicating earlier, it's essentially how you are paying for it. So if you pay for a single license of Project Professional, you have this upfront cost that is not a subscription. You're not paying the monthly to be running Project Professional, but rather you're paying it outright, kind of the way we've traditionally have done it. As it relates to the Project Server license, for the most part, Microsoft is pushing you to a partner in order to purchase the project server license there. And then, of course, you can see the standard, which is the version that has all of the same features and functionality as professional, with the exception of not being able to connect to project server.